From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over three decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. Issue one, Orlando and politics. Clinton wants to allow radical Islamic terrorists to pour into our country. She's in total denial. She supports so much of what is wrong. And you shouldn't be able to exploit loopholes and evade criminal background checks by buying online or at a gun show. 49 attendees were murdered last Sunday and 50 others wounded when Omar Mateen attacked a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida. Mr. Mateen claimed allegiance to the ISIS terrorist group and was shot dead by police. But the slaughter has now entered the presidential campaign. The Republican Donald Trump says President Obama has failed or even defined the terrorists as quote-unquote radical Islam. And Mr. Trump is again calling for a ban on Muslim visitors to the United States. In contrast, Hillary Clinton says tougher gun control is needed, including banning civilian ownership of assault rifles. Mrs. Clinton also wants more action to counter terrorist financing. Question, who has the best policy? Pat. Well, it depends on whether you think the issue is an issue of gun control or whether you think the issue is one of terrorism from ISIS, ISIS-inspired and ISIS-directed, which is coming to the United States. I was surprised that Trump, late in the week, got the support basically of John McCain, who said Barack Obama's policy in Iraq is responsible for this. But more importantly, CIA Director Brennan said that ISIS, there are more people than you imagine out there. They're coming here. They're coming into Europe. They're ISIS sustained. They're much worse than Al Qaeda was. And basically, we can anticipate a lot more terrorism like this in the West, in the United States. And I will say, you know, Lord forbid that it happens, but if it does happen, I think that the United States, as Europe has, will suddenly start moving to the right where we see all these right-wing parties in Europe. And I think the beneficiary of more of these atrocities would be Trump. Well, so far the polls don't bear that out. Uh, his uh, policies, such as they exist, uh, call for a ban on Muslims coming into this country when, in fact, Muslim troops are, are fighting against ISIS. Uh, Muslim Americans are in our armed forces. Uh, there is no nuance in, in Donald Trump's policies. I think Hillary Clinton has introduced a variety of things that we need, need to do. They are sort of extensions of what uh, President Obama is already doing, and you have to you have to do something about guns and the ready availability of guns. You have to address mental health. And you have to understand that this shooter appears to be uh, one of, uh, he's a lone wolf. He's uh, radicalized over the internet. Uh, he's from Queens. He didn't come pouring in here from a distant uh, country. And so uh, the fact, another point that uh, Brennan made was that the successes that the US and other countries have been having fighting uh, ISIS overseas has intensified uh, their uh, ability or their goal to try to, through pop propaganda, to get people to self-radicalize yeah. in this country. So yes, that is, it's a continuing danger. It's very hard to battle that with the kind of you know, blunt force that Donald Trump is talking about. You know, the, as Pat says, the debate here is about guns and terrorism. I don't think it is an issue about guns. And I think the proof of that is that you're going to have these mass shootings. You're going to have mass killings around the world. What we should do is do what like Cornyn is proposing in Congress is to have a 72 hour waiting period. The Department of Justice gets notified if someone on the watch list buys it. But then a judge on probable cause has to approve it. Feinstein has a different level that would uh, destroy due process rights, which is interesting based on her CIA investigation, which slandered the CIA. But the gun issue specifically, if you look at Chicago, where you see 45% of the population white, 32% black, the level of gun crime in the black community suspect, according to the Chicago Police Department, suspects in terms of shootings, 79% black uh, and 1% white. 
Yeah, and I so there's a racial on, disparity. No, and, but th there is a specific sociological issue going on in communities there. Republicans have ignored that for too long in terms mm -hmm. of poverty. But if sure. you look back at ISIS sure. in terms of the black banner, what it is about is that where they can say to the world, look at us, the world cannot defeat us, the United States cannot defeat us, that ordained a power attracts these losers like this guy and also attracts people there. And the president's policy, unfortunately, the president is in space in terms of his policy. And it is proved not so much by me or anyone else, but the State Department we see on Friday. And what do you suggest? That. You want to put American troops in there and uh, take out? ISIS? I would like to see more special f operations forces there, but I would also well, like that's to see what tr giving Trump's policy is yeah. to send American give, troops in give. there, and he is going to to fix ISIS immediately, instantly. He says, but he won't give any details. Trump he is said, a joke. You've got to elect me first. I'm not. Well, the question defend. was, whose policy is better? Right. right. And picking between Hillary and Trump, my money's with Hillary. Right. My, it's a it's a dice roll against uh, into the beloved. Fighting ISIS is well, a dice roll, but it's a very serious issue yeah. that we have to deal with if we're going to deal with this international terrorism. Question: Will President Obama respond to the criticism he got on the end of the memo signed by 51 U.S. diplomats mm -hmm. urging strikes against uh, Assad? I think that no, no, no and not. I hope he does not. Me, me I too. can't think of a stupider thing to do than to launch a war to knock over Assad after we've knocked over Saddam, knocked over the guy in Afghanistan, knocked over the guy in Libya, opened up these garbage cans and all these crazy terrorists come out. Do these State Department guys, have they thought through who is going to run in, who's going to run Damascus after they get rid of Assad? Yeah. Get rid of Assad, yeah, you could be at war with the Russians again. Yeah, but it, does, they're it, him it up. does reflect a great uneasiness, not just in the State Department, but in the general population, to anyone who watches what's unfolding in Syria. I mean, clearly you can't say the U.S. policy is working. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm, not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, so I, I, I'll back? make a pred prediction here. Whoever is president next, cannot just continue what Obama is doing. Well, and it's either but, it's yeah. either I, I, intensifying in some way, and Hillary Clinton has ways to I turn the ISIS, dial up without getting completely ISIS involved. Is on the run. ISIS has got to be crushed in Syria and Mosul and Fallujah and Raqqa. But when you do crush it, all the, that anthill, it is going to spread into Europe. But I think it's a necessary but not sufficient condition. you got to take down ISIS where it is. And I agree with Obama on that. OK. Influencing the Donald. Look, I've spoken to him about the Muslim ban and how I disagree with it, uh, about about the deportation. I don't support that. He's, well, that's not part of our agenda. Speaking to CBS our, Face the Nation last in, weekend, we Republican support. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Paul Ryan, brushed aside Donald Trump's plan to deport 11 million illegal immigrants. That contradicts what Donald Trump has been telling his supporters at campaign rallies. He insists that his plans are not up for negotiation, regardless of the continuing divergence between the most senior Republican in Congress and the man who would be the next Republican president is obvious. And it raises another question, namely, whether anyone can influence the Donald. Don't talk, please be quiet. Just be quiet to the leaders. Either stick together or let me just do it by myself. I'll do very well. I'm gonna do very well. Okay. Question, who has the most influence with uh, Donald Trump? <laughs> the 11 million voters who supported him in the primaries or GOP office holders on Capitol Hill? Try that out on... Donald, Donald Trump mm -hmm. has the most influence with Donald Trump. I mean, he <laughs> has said he has a good brain and that's what he pays attention to. What you're gonna hear more and more on Capitol Hill is that uh, Republicans are free to follow their own conscience as to whether they're going to support Donald Trump or not. And those Republicans running in purple states, states that Barack Obama won, are going to be running as far away from Donald Trump as possible. And you, it has even brought President Bush out on the campaign trail, George W. Bush, trying to save the Republican senators. He, he was one of the most unpopular presidents when he left office. But he know, looks terrific. But you know, there's some states like to Donald Trump. Kirk in Illinois, your state of Illinois, mm -hmm. who's backed off, not going to support Trump. But look, you pay a price if you say, look, 
I have nothing to do with him. There's tremendous numbers of people. It's 13 million Republicans out there voted for Trump. He's supported by something like 80 percent of Republicans. You say I'm not going to support the nominee. You pay a price for that, Eleanor. Yeah, but you made a good point there because you can't run with Trump. Can't run without him if you're a Republican right now. Uh, and the the thing is that that he is uh, uh, become well. The problem is he's still running a primary campaign. <laughs> he's got no mm -hmm. particular strategy for crossing over. Uh, even his fundraising uh, right now is in states that he has no chance of winning. Uh, so it's uh, no, New York, California, all this talk about him carrying those states, forget I, it. You know? What should Paul Ryan do? Get off the bench and get in the game, supporting Donald Trump, or continue his carping from the sidelines. He, he should be doing what he's doing, which is to try and guide Donald Trump in a way that preserves the Republican brand as something that can include support, but also recognizes that Donald Trump has won the plurality of Republican supporters. The big problem, though, if we talk about those congressional races, the growing concern there about the future of the party, and also if you look at Trump's unfavorables coming out this week, which are really, I think, very noticeably skyrocketing in a downward direction. And that is a big problem for the party because, again, it is a brand, oh, but at the same time with Trump if yeah. you look at the, the who can influence Trump well the Trump that he looks well, at that he sees in the mirror each morning and potentially this. Newt Gingrich Trump maybe. is far stronger right now than Barry Goldwater ever was Goldwater is 50 points behind right now secondly Rockefeller took a walk on Goldwater George Romney took a walk and Bill Scranton took a walk and they were never heard from again except Rockefeller, who got dumped from Ford's right. ticket and because of what he did to Goldwater. And Goldwater lost, and that was a long time ago. What I'm saying is you desert, you desert the nominee, yeah. and you may it, never be but, the nominee. Yeah, but yeah, it's about right. self-preservation, about people who want to hold their Senate seats. It's right. about Paul Ryan, right. who's trying to hold the House majority, which if, right. if Trump's numbers continue to yep. take a nosedive as they have, the House could also be in jeopardy. So you he's trying to preserve that words, majority. In other words, if the numbers go down, you cut and run. That is real political <laughs> loyalty. What? There's really it's, nothing they can do. Yeah, they yeah, they, yeah, they can't politics. run with him, they can't run without him. You know, like John, John McCain, he's got to run with Trump to get reelected out, out there in Arizona because uh, the, the, the Republicans there are mostly... to Clarence's point yeah. very quickly, Trump only represents 33% as a conservative, whatever your conservatism, of what is at stake in this election. The Supreme Court and the legislature, as the other two branches of government, are on the line as well. Yeah, but if you don't get Trump, you don't you get don't the Supreme get Court, the do you, unless you're betting on Hillary. <laughs> right, but, but, the same, but, but if you look at the, what is going to happen into the party if Trump continues on this train, that is why we saw with you, who is Trump going to pick as his running mate? I actually now hope it's Gingrich, because Gingrich <laughs> seems the only person who Trump will listen to criticism from. Well, well, you know, I think <laughs> one would hope. Anybody, anyway. anybody who's lived in Washington for the last uh, couple of election no. cycles and remembers what Newt Gingrich has been associated with, uh, you know, he's, he's a smart guy. There used to be in, in his office, there were two boxes. One big box says Newt's ideas. The much smaller box said Newt's good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I agree with Tom. Yeah, I think Trump it. could be. You find out where you are when you get to that convention. If you're 15 points behind, that's why I agreed with Mondale when he took Jerry Farrar. Poop, you roll the dice. It didn't work. But you maybe have to roll the dice. Uh, is Gingrich yeah. a rolling the dice? You, you think the is. country's going <laughs> <laughs> to rise up and applaud Newt Gingrich back on the scene? On a self-inflicted so. political damage scale, zero to ten, zero meaning no damage whatsoever, ten meaning political suicide, how much damage is Ryan doing to himself? He's hurt himself with the establishment, and he's, uh, and he's hurt himself basically with the Trump folks. I would say it's four or five. Uh, you know, I don't know that he's got a great future. Yeah, no more golden boy. I would say 6.5. <laughs> it, it's five. If Trump loses, Ryan retains his influence for the rebranding. If Trump wins, Ryan has a big problem. Y'all are reading my mind, five. <laughs> I think uh, 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 Ryan, people understand his situation right now, put it that way. Mm -hmm. The answer is nine. Uh -huh. But only if Trump wins. If Trump loses, zero. Right, right exactly. Issue two, Donald versus David. It looks like we're not going to have a very good relationship. Who knows? I hope to have a good relationship with him. But it sounds like he's not willing to address the problem either. Doesn't know what I'm all about. I think they're very rude statements. Uh, and frankly, tell him I will remember those statements. Donald Trump slammed Prime Minister David Cameron and Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, in an interview with British television last month. 
But Mr. Cameron and Mr. Khan are open critics of Mr. Trump's proposal to ban Muslims from visiting the United States. But responding to Mr. Trump's interview, Prime Minister Cameron refused to back away from his criticism. The Donald's plan, says Cameron, is, quote, divisive and stupid, unquote. Question, would a Trump victory spell the end of the special relationship between England and America? Pat Buchanan. No, it would not, John. Look, the relationship is not a good one, but because of the whole Brexit thing coming up, it may be doubtful that Cameron is even Prime Minister of Great Britain uh, on the day after Brexit. But I think the relationship between the United States and Great Britain, not because of the 19th century when it was very, very bad, <laughs> but because of the 20th century where we fought side by side in those two wars, there's no closer ally of the United States than Great Britain. And Bismarck was right in the 19th century when he said the greatest fact in the 20th century will be the fact that the Americans speak English. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, the special relationship holds, but um, uh, Mr. Cameron has a lot more on the line than his relationship with Donald Trump because he's going all out for uh, the UK to remain in the European Union, and right now the polls show it's kind of touch and go. And the, 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 the murder of one of the members of Parliament, Joe Cox, a very beloved, I think she was a socialist, mm -hmm. she was a very caring person by somebody who was a sympathizer of the Nazi, neo-Nazi movement in this country, has really uh, uh, shaked the, the country to its core because that kind of gun violence is not seen in the UK. I mean, we are unique in this country to almost have this kind of gun violence become uh, normal. But after a 90, 1996 slaughter in a school in the UK, they really cracked down on gun laws. Did yep. the US-UK relationship hit a new low when Downing Street rejected Obama's appeals not to join China's Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Yeah. Yes, it did. That was a very big point of contention behind the scenes. Uh, it improved slightly when David Cameron agreed to uh, spend 2% of GDP on defense, which the president, and we discussed this on the show. But Joe Cox is a great tragedy. Yeah. They're uh, universally respected. They had a memorial today. They've suspended campaigning over Brexit. But look, David Cameron and, and uh, you know, I think Pat and Elder and Clarence called it, and I was I was wrong, but that it, the polls have shifted. And, and it seems that the issue in the UK is that the people who want to leave uh, the European Union now uh, mm -hmm. have about a three or four percentage point lead coming up to the vote next week. And that means, in the condition of most of the voters who want to leave being older, more likely to vote, mm -hmm. that if they do leave, David Cameron uh, will probably be replaced by Boris Johnson, a uh, very quick order, who is a more intelligent version of Donald Trump, uh, but, well, a mm. nicer version, but slightly eccentric. That's such a high bar, uh, I know, more right. intelligent than Donald Trump. Well, he was an Oxford you know? Classics graduate, mm -hmm. so maybe he is slightly better than that. But. Indeed, I, I, I think the, the thing about the special relationship is it is durable, but uh, Trump seems to be committed to doing everything he can to damage it, uh, actually, because, I mean, we look at Cameron's situation right now, touchy as it is, and he, they got their own immigration issues over there and their own uh, issues in regard to, uh, to, to Brexit. Uh, uh, Trump just kind of makes it worse and saying, I'm going to remember this, like he's throwing down a glove of challenge but to, you know, to be imagine this guy it, as president. But look, yeah. the Trump, what might be called Trumpism has mm -hmm. been rising in Great Britain it is rising in France, it is rising in Central Europe. It is this desire of people to take back to their own countries their destiny and their sovereignty. And so at the same Trump time, making it better or worse? Well, no, though. what I'm saying is, I know you can knock him as much as you want, but this is a real force that people ought to take a look at. It is not simply, I mean, he's got one man, he's got a lot of things going for him with a Trump name and everything, but this is a tremendous force in Europe and frankly, all over the world it's now. It's right-wing yep. populism, basically, and it tends to emerge when there are economic hard times, where you try to find scapegoats, and that's what but Trump has done, and that's time. what There's other right-wing sure. parties well, are doing right as well. About the, about the energy being on the side of the exit, uh, but I'll be interested to see in, th in this election what impact that assassination will have, because th th that's a big shock for England to have a member of parliament killed on the streets like that, and maybe there will be a backlash they're in favor of the common market. We will see. Pretty horrible. Very much so. Is Cameron's real target Trump's proposed tariffs on China? 
No, tr Cameron was trying to appease members of his, the British parliamentary parties across the board uh, that really don't like Trump. And he didn't think Trump had a chance. The political officers at the embassy here are probably getting in some trouble over that. We're, we're lucky that we're pundits. But Trump yeah. flashed support for Brexit. That right. wasn't helpful. <laughs> yeah. But Cameron yeah. is warring. They regret it. They yeah. regret it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tr Trump's uh, probably uh, favorite world leader is Vladimir Putin. Yeah. It's not David Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This week anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> they are uh, across the world, apart from uh, Mr. Putin, there are fingers crossed that uh, Hillary Clinton will be <laughs> right. for right or wrong. Right. Boy, Putin knows how to play Trump, though, boy. He goes and compliments Trump in public, which placates Trump right away, and then at the same time spies on, <laughs> on, on Trump's right. file at the DNC. Right. Ask a question. Will Trump and Cameron meet and patch things up on this trip, yes or no? Pat. I don't know that they will meet because it's the day after Brexit. I don't know what that Cameron's going to be going up to a Scottish uh, <laughs> golf course to meet the Donald. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't think a, a meeting is necessarily in the cards at all. And if Trump's polls continue to look as weak as they are, if David Cameron is still prime minister, he may think it's wasted time to meet with him. Yeah, I, th I think because of Trump's unpopularity and because of how close the vote is going to be anyway, uh, tr I think now Cameron will avoid that meeting. Mm -hmm. I agree, although Cameron maybe ought to start enjoying the golf when he ever gets a chance. <laughs> yeah, that's the way true. Going. <laughs> Superficially, yes, they're both pragmatists, but serious differences in national interests on trade with China remain. Issue three, Trump versus the Washington Post. <laughs> Calling the Washington Post, quote, dishonest and phony, unquote, Donald Trump this week suspended the newspaper's access to his campaign event. Washington Post executive editor Martin Barron is not happy. The man, Barron says, is, quote, nothing less than repudiation of the role of a free and independent press, unquote. Mr. Barron pledged his reporters would continue so covering attacks. Mr. Trump. Still, this isn't the first time Mr. Women. Trump has banned they media from his events. The Trump campaign has thus far restricted credentials to Gawker, BuzzFeed, Foreign Policy, Politico, Univision, Mother Jones, The Daily Beast, The Huffington Post, and others. And while Mr. Trump insists the reporting media is biased against him, disquiet is growing against his media policies. In part, that's because Mr. Trump has also called for a change to libel laws and regularly threatens lawsuits against media outlets that publish articles with which he disagrees. Question, is the Washington Post biased against uh, Mr. Trump? Eleanor. No, it's uh, called Good Journalism, and Marty Barron, who's the editor of the Washington Post, was at the Boston Globe when the Boston Globe did pioneering work about the Catholic Church and uh, the pedophilia that was rampant in the church that resulted in the movie Spotlight that won uh, the Oscar. Uh, so this is a newspaper, it also has the history of Watergate, uh, and that pioneering coverage as well. I think Donald Trump is getting uncomfortable with the kind of scrutiny he's getting, which somebody who's competing to be president is going to be uh, subject to. He's been treated mainly as sort of a circus act, of entertainment up until now. Now he's getting you know, serious coverage. Mm -hmm. And frankly, to be banned from his rallies, you can watch him on TV. So that's not going to stop the, uh, the, the the coverage that he's going to get, and it should get tougher. It oh, will. Look, I, well, the Washington Post has the most, the deepest animus against Donald Trump of any newspaper in any election I have ever seen. It's not only the neoconservative columnists and some of the conservative columnists are attacking him and savaging. The editorial page says Republicans have a moral obligation to disown him. Bob Woodward goes out and said, we got 20 guys investigating Trump. Why? The point, I've seen even the front page, you read stories that just attack Trump in the news story. They don't even wait for the editorial page. It is a tremendously hostile newspaper to Trump, and everybody at the Washington Post would have a collective heart attack if he won the presidency of the United States. But I do raise it a question. wouldn't be alone either. Well, here's the thing. I do raise a question why I don't think if I were Trump, I would ignore it. There's nothing you can do about some of these guys, and it's a distraction. 
keep moving on toward the prize. You know, Donald Trump loves publicity, hates scrutiny. That's the simple, mm -hmm. simply that, no matter whether you're the Washington Post or anybody else. And he, he, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. The fact is, you know, he's so offended over this headline that he would no longer let the reporters it come in. It was a horrible headline. Yeah, when he the reporters was involved in the, the murder. The headline was already changed he's, before he even made his complaint. You know, it was very obvious. But it was, it was a minor thing for him to be making such a big deal about, except to appeal to his base. That's why I say, once again, He's still campaigning to his base and, and throwing them red meat about, oh, the media's out to get us, while in the meantime, he's not reaching out to swing here's, voters. Here's, here's the thing. Look, Trump has this, I, I, I think it is sociopathic, the way he freaks out about criticism and attention. Is there a media bias against him? Absolutely. And, and there are too many newspapers, unfortunately, that run reporter articles from I'll, otherwise good I'll reporters, which have an editorial, well, not, <laughs> not the tribute, that have an editorial line uh, imbued at them. Look at Hillary Clinton you know, the criticism. Has she got ne me negative media coverage? Yes. But the amount of lying she's been doing, she should have got more. Donald Trump, though, the, as this continues, it's only going to get worse. He needs to get over it because it ain't going to change. Right. More concerning to me about Trump is when he threatens libel suits. There's a tradition that is very kind of European, oh, anti the First on, Amendment. you got the New York Times versus I Sullivan, I know. in which I was, in, my, right. I was involved and my yeah. brother was involved. But he's got no chance. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Well, exactly. What's he doing? It's a but why say court, it? It's a Supreme Court decision that set it down. Right. You can't change Why is he that by, it? with uh, it's, legislation. It's, it's feeding the, his base. I right. mean, they love to, to to take this out on the media. You know, going back to George Wallace rallies, <laughs> <laughs> when George Wallace used to single out the media, and the, the crowd loved it. It worked for Spira him. Spira Agnew. Yeah. I mean, there are Greg some, some well, great names. Wallace in, uh, said, in "Hey, when Chris and I, when this rally is over, it. we're going on a distorting trip." <laughs> <laughs> I remember the 64 Republican convention, the, the pointing at the press gallery and saying, that's them, boo. Remember, remember and Trump Eisenhower, does the same thing Eisenhower now. Eisenhower said, sensation-seeking columnists and commentators, just a line that was written in there, the whole place exploded. A false prediction. Give it to me, Pat. The House of Representatives will confirm what the Senate did in putting women subject to the draft. The answer is no. Um, subject to registering for the draft, Congress will not bring back the draft. No, I don't think they will. It's a stupid idea. If we ever need to draft women, and they play critical roles, but if we ever have to draft women, we have got a big problem with millions of casualties. I agree. Sentiments are so high against the draft right now at, at all levels that I doubt that this measure will pass in order to have, have women included in the draft. It's not happening. The answer is yes. In the next big war, women will be drafted. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.